Uh, good morning to all of you that will be tuning in this morning. Uh, God bless all of you. I just wanted to uh, go back on here, and I want to kind of uh, cover a few things yesterday and do a part two on exposing the false teachers and prophets and bringing the purity uh, to the back to the prophetic. Amen. So by the grace of God, I want to share some of these things uh, with you. It's a little earlier than normal, but I want to share some of these things uh, with you on today. So please, those that will be uh, joining us, uh, please share it with your friends. Amen. Amen. Let me wait for them. Wait for some of you to come on. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let me wait for some of you to come on. Amen. Amen. Please share it with your friends. Please share it. Hey, God bless you, Sister Yolanda. God bless you. Please share this with your friends. Amen. Please share this video. Uh, I want to go to Isaiah chapter 32, uh, and we're going to be a few different places to get today. Uh, I just wanted to... Uh, touch on a few other things uh, today uh, that I didn't get to touch on yesterday concerning false teachings, false prophets, and a message uh, that I believe is bringing a reproach to the gospel, and it is uh, destroying uh, the body of Christ uh, with the commercialism uh, and also the merchandising. Uh, so I want to share this uh, with you today. I'm going to go to Isaiah uh, chapter 32 uh, and hopefully some other ones, uh, other people will join us uh, today. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 6. And if you would, just please type this in, Sister Yolanda. Uh, God bless you, uh, Elder Mom. God bless you. I want to retouch on some of these things that I did, uh, did not get to yesterday, as I said. Uh, God bless you. And we're going to talk about exposing false teachers, uh, prophets, and just bringing a purity back to the prophetic. Uh, Isaiah chapter 32. And as I said, we're going to be a few places today. I'll try not to go too fast so that you can get uh, these scriptures and read these scriptures in your quiet time. Amen. Isaiah 32 and uh, verse 6, it says, For the foolish person will speak foolishness, and his heart will work iniquity. <clears throat> and to practice ungodliness, to utter error against the Lord, and to keep the hungry unsatisfied, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. And also the schemes of the schemer are evil. He devises wicked plans to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaks justice. Amen. And so I want to talk about this uh, today. And I just want to touch on this and how to identify uh, false teachers. And one of the things is that many a times, and I want to warn uh, those who are operating uh, in this today, stay out of my inbox and uh, quit messaging me and Facebooking me. Look, it's a waste of time. We have to stop doing this. It's destroying the body of Christ. All right. And by the grace of God, I hope you are join me today so I can show you in the scriptures. Amen. Uh, how this is off and there's error in it. OK. Uh, the Bible says that they practice ungodliness. We talked about how false teachers, many of them practice ungodliness. Uh, they utter error against the Lord. So in other words, they say uh, that they prophesy and utter things to say it's the Lord. Uh, but it keeps you hungry and unsatisfied. And the drink of the thirsty that you need, many a times it fails, which means when you come into their services, you're leaving the same way. All right. All the schemes are, are evil. They devise wicked plans. Uh, there's a, a motive that is unpure to the teaching that is being done. Are y'all listening to me? All right. And, and many a times it's foolish and it's rhetoric uh, and it's misleading the people of God. Amen. And listen, I want to just share a scripture in the book of Mark chapter 11 and seven, uh, 17. Uh, and God has warned us about 
of these people and false teachers. And some of us are not reading our Bibles. We believe everything the men of God say or women of God. Let me tell you this. Look, don't even believe everything God say. Go to the scriptures and read them for yourself. Amen. But Jesus came into the temple. God bless you, Brother Chris. Please share uh, this with your friends. Amen. Share this. Uh, he came uh, to... <clears throat> He came into the, the temple and he said that my house should be a house of prayer and not a den of thieves. And guess what? They were merchandising doves, which is a picture of the Holy Spirit. It's Mark 11 and 17. If I get a chance, I'll try to go over there. Amen. But he, he destroyed the money changers, the merchandising and all of the things that we see in the church. Now, listen. I'm not saying that we shouldn't market or sell our products. Ministry costs money, but the gospel is free. Okay. And the Bible does say in first Timothy five and 17, that those who labor in word and doctrine would well should be paid. Well, we should be paid well, but we should never, never develop gimmicks. And as I said this yesterday, if you're going to raise an offering, you don't have to take two or three offerings and, and rape the people. And some of you leaders need to repent because you have allowed these false teachers and prophets to come into your churches and rape the people. And some, the Holy Ghost is looking for you. And even Jesus has seen it all. And you have raped the people. Amen. You have raping the people, amen, and molesting the people and robbing the people. And I'm, I'm just going to talk about a few things. I ain't even got over there uh, to the, the toll-free numbers and, and teaching and this gospel that's teaching uh, that God wants to serve us. And only we should have wealth and possessions, and, and that is related to our salvation. OK, I, I want to talk about this because it's false, it's false, it's heresy and it's not of God. Amen. Amen. So some people, they're coming, they can't get a drink. They come to be uh, get a drink. And some of you that know how it is to be real thirsty, you need a breakthrough. You need water. And what you will do is hoping that you get a drink, but you're leaving hungry and unsatisfied when we come to the house of God. Amen. And some are destroying, okay, the people of God. And I know some of you are going to, you know, fight me. It's okay. But these hundred dollar lines, these thousand dollar lines, they got to go. And nowhere did Jesus support this type of ministry. All right. He overthrew and the money changers, he rebuked them and said, hey, you should start with prayer first. Okay. Okay. They were selling doves in there. And as I said, it's a picture of selling the Holy Spirit, marketing the ministry. It's nothing wrong but uh, putting your ministry out there if you're helping people and preaching the gospel. Amen. When you preach the gospel, I believe God will bless you. And you don't have to tell somebody uh, to give a seed and God is going to do this. This is teaching, as I said yesterday, I didn't get to talk about it, that God is predictable and that he wants to serve you and not that we serve him. Are y'all listening to me today? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 11. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 11 today. Jeremiah chapter 11, uh, 11 through 16. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 11. And let's, uh, I want to share this too and talk about this. Jeremiah chapter 11. And I mean, I'm sorry, Jeremiah chapter 7. And verse 11. Amen. Amen. Y'all stay with me today. Please share this with your friends. Please share this with other friends on your page. Amen. Amen. And the word of God declares in verse 11, has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves in your eyes? Behold, I even have seen it, says the Lord. So he has seen it. OK, and and listen, it's a difference between a thief and a robber. A robber just come and stick you up and say, hey, give it up. But a thief, he gradually takes things. He he'll break into your house and steal it when you're not there or even steal it in front of you. And some of us are thieves. I'm just going to be honest with you. And God wants this mess to stop. 
hear the word of the Lord. But it says, go now to my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at first and to see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people, Israel. And now because you have done all these works, says the Lord, and I spoke to you, rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear. I called you, but you did not um, did, but you did not hear. And I called you, but you did not Answer, therefore, I will do to the house which is called by my name and which you trust and to the place which I gave to you and your fathers as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all of your brethren, the whole posterity of Ephraim, which represents the blessing. Amen. Amen. And this is happening today. And let me tell you something. Uh, prophets, teachers, pastors, God will never. Amen. God would never share nothing. Amen. He would never share nothing that is outside of what's rich, written in the logos. And I want to talk about some of these gimmicks and they call them prophetic acts. Amen. God bless you, Apostle Jeffrey. God bless you. Share this with your friends. Uh, telling people uh, to drink all. We're going to pray over all. Sending stuff in the mail. Sending soap in the mail. Wash with this. And look, your water witching if you're taking those baths and drinking this stuff they send to you. This is all witchcraft. You don't find nobody in the Bible doing this. Okay? It's outside of written scripture. And stop lying on God. Amen. We're lying on God many a times. We're trying to, we're trying to earn a living and, and we gift and merchandise for money. And listen, the money, the money changers in the temple were set up uh, to exchange Roman money for Jewish money. And listen, what they look, look at what they were doing. They were getting 20 to 300% interest. So false prophets or teachers, they deceive their, even their own selves. Amen. And some of them don't even know. They so deep and embedded into it, don't even realize that what they are teaching is false. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 13. Let's read this. Jeremiah 14 and verse 13. It says, Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say to them, you should not see the sword, nor should you have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. So they always prophesy peace. They always prophesy a, a blessing, no famine, no judgment. They never correct you in sin, and they never turn the people of God from sin to God. All right. These are signs of false teachers. And false prophets. And it says, and the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I'm in Jeremiah chapter 14 and, and verse 13 and 14. I'm reading 14. Somebody put that up on the screen. God bless you. Share this with your friends. Amen. Share this with your other friends. It says, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They have prophesied to you false visions, divination, or worthless things, and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus says the Lord, concerning the prophets who prophesy in my name, whom I did not send, uh, who say, sword and famine shall uh, for sword and famine shall not be in this land by sword and famine. Those prophets shall be consumed. So you will be consumed by the sword of the Lord, by, by the word of God and by famine. If you continue with this behavior, it's written right here. You should be consuming. The Bible says that and the people to whom they prophesy should be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they will have no one to bear them. So even the people that you prophesy to, they live lives of mediocrity. Are y'all listening to me? They're poor. They're impoverished. They have famine. And even when they die, there will be no one to bury them. This is the word of God. Jeremiah 14, 13 through 16. Amen. Look at it for yourself. We must get back. We must get back to purity of heart and we must have a grace on our lips. Are y'all listening to me? We must have a grace on our lips and on our mouth. 
Proverbs chapter 10. Let me go to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 31 and 32. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 31 and 32. It says the mouth of the righteous bring forth wisdom. See, the mouth of the false cannot. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut out. Let your tongues be cut out. All you that are false, that are preaching this gospel, I ain't gonna, I'm going to get to peddling the gospel too. This is false. Amen. And God is not a part of it. And he's unhappy with it. Proverbs 18 and 4 says this. Proverbs 18 and 4. Y'all put those scriptures up. I just read you Proverbs 10 and 31 through 32. Proverbs 18 and 4 says, The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. A wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. So your words shall edify, encourage, build up. But he never attached a seed or a word to it. He never gave a word and then uh, attached the seed. God bless you, Sister Danella. God bless you, Sister Cicely. God bless you. Please share this with your friends. Amen. He never attached it. As I said before, false prophets, they walk in lies and even in adultery. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 23. And, and I'm going to go back over there to Jeremiah 23. And 14, I want to show it to you in the scriptures. Remember in Isaiah chapter 32, 6 through 8, I read that early in the text and how you're thirsty, uh, you're never satisfied, you're hungry, but they said, hey, give that seed, keep giving that seed, give that seed, give that seed, give that seed. They are teaching uh, uh, and teaching that God is predictable. Amen. And that you don't serve him, that you serve he serves you, all right? None of these gentlemen that are preaching this gospel will go and tell the, how about going to tell the third world country that God wants them prosperous to be in health, to have new houses, cars, prosperity. We got to stop prophesying on this mess. And it's not that God doesn't want to bless you, amen? He, the Bible says he delights in the prosperity of his children, okay? And it's nothing wrong with receiving donations and, and for your ministry. Of course, it takes money to. My problem is the schemes, uh, the wickedness, the divisiveness, the adultery, the, the perversion, and how they have transgressed the law of God. Jeremiah 23 and 14. And if you want to know more about false prophets, just read in Jeremiah chapter 23 and Jeremiah 29. Let me read this in verse 14. Jeremiah 23 and verse 14, it says, Also I have seen the horrible thing in the prophets of Jerusalem. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They also strengthen the hands of evildoers. See this? So that no one turns back from his wickedness. All of them are alike, Sodom to me, and our inhabitants are like Gomorrah. Y'all see this? And then he gives the judgment uh, them and the wormwood in verses uh, 15. He talks about uh, they would drink the water of the gall, bitter waters and wormwood and all of this stuff. And, you know, listen, we got to stop it. We've got to stop this nonsense. Some are even drunkards in Isaiah 28 and verse seven. Yeah, I'm talking to you today. Those who are doing, if you're not, and listen, let me tell, let me tell y'all something today. These, these false prophets and teachers cannot be false if you don't follow them. Some of the, some of them, are, some of you are following them. They can't be false if you don't follow them. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 28 and 7, I want to deal with the drunkenness that many of them are bound by. Amen. The sipping saints and saying it's okay. Uh, yeah, it says, but they also have erred through wine and through intoxicating drink and are out of the way. And the priests and the prophet have erred through an intoxicating drink. They are swallowed up by wine and they are out of the way through intoxicating drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. Are y'all listening to me? For all their tables are full of vomit and filth 
and no place is clean. Do you know a table is where things sit, where you sit down and eat? Some are eating from them filthy tables that vomit is all on. Some are eating from those tables. And some need to call those devils up. I'm being honest with you. Some are eating from those filthy tables. Amen. Isaiah 30 and 10. Let's talk about Isaiah 30 and 10. I want to talk about the smooth and flattering sayings and cliches and secularism and humanism mix. And I'm going to have defined to you by the grace of God, American materialism and charismatic humanism and witchcraft. Amen. Isaiah 30 and verse 10. Look what it says. It says, who say to the seers, do not see. And to the prophets, do not prophet to us, to us right things. Speak to us smooth things, flattering words, prophesy deceits to us. Are y'all with me? I know a lot of y'all quiet today. I don't see no thumbs up or hearts today. Amen. Amen. They prophesied deceits to you. How much longer are you going to tolerate it? How much longer are we going to turn a blind eye to it? And how much longer are we going to be into places? Listen, and guess what? If you got to do schemics, schemes, uh, schemes, tricks, and gimmicks for the people to give, listen, go find work. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't need it anyway. Go and find work. God ain't called you to a full-time ministry because whatever God calls you to do, he'll give provision. Amen. You don't have the income, go to work. That way, because listen, you're going to run out of schemes. You're going to run out of gimmicks. You're going to run out of tricks. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Some, that's why some won't even go to church. They are watching the televangelist that's telling them, run to the phone, run to the phone. I just read Psalm 30. I just read Psalm 30. Everybody give $30. God's going to do this. He's going to bless you financially. Let me ask you this. What happens if he don't this week? Soon as they're on there again, you're under that spell of hypnotism from watching them. And you give it again. You keep giving that seed, hoping for that breakthrough, hoping that God's going to do something. Listen, God blesses you according to 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 10. Go and read it. He doesn't bless you when you give out of necessity or grudgingly. He only blesses the cheerful giver. And when you give, it shall be given unto you, shaken down, pressed together, and running over. Some of the things that they are saying, because you followed the principle of giving, it is coming to pass. That's why you keep wanting to give. Because you followed the principle of giving. It ain't because of what they said was that exactly true. Let's look at Jeremiah 2 and 8. They walk at the foolish things. Jeremiah 2 and 8. Let me share this. Jeremiah 2 and 8. It says, and made my heritage. And No, it says in verse 8. I'm sorry. In verse 8, it says, the priest did not say, where is the Lord? And those who handle the law did not know me. Are y'all looking at this? The rulers also transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. And against your children, children, I will bring charges for a pass beyond the coast. So, Y'all see this? Therefore, he says, I will bring yet bring charges against you. Some are going to be arrested by God. Jeremiah chapter 2 and 8. Go and read it. Stop it before you get arrested. Some are fugitives, but we're still doing ministry all over the place. But you're a fugitive. And what you're calling an anointing is connected with witchcraft. They walk after foolish names. They prophesy. And Baal is the Lord or owner or possessor to the covenant. That's what Baal means. That's what Baal means. That's who they prophesy by. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah, it's a polluted sanctuary. It's done in violence and everything. Zephaniah 3 and 4. Some are polluting the sanctuary and they are violent towards the word of God. Let's go to Zephaniah. 
Zephaniah chapter 3 and 4. Let me show it to you in the scriptures. Y'all stay with me. God wants this foolishness stop in the body of Christ, people of God. And as an apostle of God, I've got to say something about it. I'm not turning a blind eye to it. Okay? And any of you, if you come or I'm with you and you do it, I'm going to rebuke you. Amen. I'm not going to be a part of that because you are cursed because you're preaching another gospel. And I'm going to get there in just a second. Amen. Amen. Zephaniah 3 and verse 4. It says her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. They have done violence. You have done violence to the law. You're treacherous, many of you. You're violent. You have polluted the sanctuary. The church, you polluted it with this false teaching, these false doctrines. Y'all stay with me. Amen. False prophets are irresponsible. They're treacherous. As I said, they even tell lies and prophesy dreams. Please share this with your friends. You know, some of us got the prophets calling, say, oh, oh, I had a dream. Let me tell you about this brief. Now, I'll tell you about it or tell you the rest of it. Now, if, if you go and sow a seed, are, are y'all listening to me? God will break you out like they're in control of what God will do in your life. Look, it's, it's manipulation, it's control, it's deception. Amen. Some of us need it broken off of us. By the grace of God, if I get a chance, I'm going to pray. Jeremiah 23 and 32. Let me read this to you. 32. 23 and 32. Jeremiah 23 and 32. Behold, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. Yet I did not send them or command them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, says the Lord. That's in Jeremiah 23, 32. It's all right here. Amen. Y'all stay with me. So, as I said, false prophets and teachers, they seldom address sin. Rather, they concentrate on accumulating wealth. They're merchandisers. They concentrate and turn. They don't concentrate on turning people from sin to God. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 15 and 4 says this. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. Amen. Proverbs 15 and 4. God bless you, Sister Shirley. Come on, some thumbs up. Give me some hearts. Amen. I know I ain't going to get a lot of amens. Amen. But amen. Praise God. Proverbs 15 and 4 says this, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it, perverseness in the tongue breaks the spirit. Proverbs 15 and 4, somebody put that up. Perverseness in the tongue breaks the spirit. Amen. That perverseness, that false doctrine in the script to pervert something is only give a half of the truth. Some of it even may be mixed. And some of us are adding to the word. And the Bible says that we shouldn't add or take away from it. Amen. Or those 10 plagues will come upon you in Revelation 18. No, I'm sorry, Revelation 22, 18 and 19. Go and look at it. We're adding to the word too. Whatever sounds good. And some of some Christians and some people, I have to say it, we're so ignorant. We don't even possess common sense. Some of us are not even reading our Bible. So they pull the wool over our eyes and we steady give it that seed. Give this and God's going to do this. I don't have a problem with prosperity. I don't have a problem with uh, people being blessed and given. Like I told you, tell the people what the needs are in doing your conference. Tell the people what you need and ask them to give a seed. That's it. Don't teach that God and don't predict nothing because they gave a seed. He'll bless them because they gave it. Because it says to give and it should be given unto you. We got to break out of this uh, teaching that God is predictable and that he serves us. Amen. The message of the false prophet, listen to me closely. It is connected to American materialism. It's American charismatic humanism.
and whose emphasis is on, listen to me closely, man's desire for wealth and his power to direct the actions of God. They feel that they can direct the actions of God. They can predict the actions of God. Amen. It takes, they take secular values. They overlay them with Christian values, claiming that real Christmas Christians will be prosperous. Okay. You'll never have any trials. You'll never have any tribulations. Amen. That real Christians will be prosperous at the top of the world. And some are saying, uh, to call this number, as I said, give a seed and you will have financial prosperity this week. Some have taken baths and showers with the soap they send you in the mail. You Listen, and some have said, hey, put this all on your money and just write a check for the biggest seed. Listen, let me tell you what you have done because it's unscriptural. You just got a bunch of all on your face and your body. That's all you got. It's unscriptural. Why would you do something outside of the scriptures? You know, anoint your wallet, anoint your checkbook. Yeah, because they want a seed from you. How many people have done this and seen no breakthrough and seen no harvest? That's a whole nother story. Y'all stay with me. This week, you're going to have a breakthrough is what they say. And many times they follow the testimony of a business failure or sickness or disease. And they gave their life to Jesus and everything. Oh, it's great now. I gave my life to Jesus. That's commercializing the gospel. I'm going to tell you, when you give your life to Jesus, all hell is breaking loose. It hasn't ended for you. It's just getting started. I'm sorry that they lied to you. I'm sorry that they lied to you. You're going to be healthy, wealthy, and successful. All right? 2 Corinthians, last scripture. 2 Corinthians. And I want you all to write these scriptures down. Let me give them. 2 Peter 3, 16 and 17, 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4, and Acts 20 and 28 through 30. All right, 2 Peter 3, 16 and 17, 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4, Acts 20 and 28 through 30. Even the apostles exposed the false teachers. Amen. The apostles exposed them. All right. Second Corinthians chapter two. Last one. I want to talk about peddling the word. This is what they're doing to you. They're peddling it. Amen. Share this with your friends. It may not be popular, but share it with your friends. Second Corinthians two and verse 17. Look what it says. For we are not. As so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God and in Christ. Let me tell you what peddling means. Peddling, I, I looked that up. And some too, also, they are connecting you with religious mind science. Okay, two. That's the spirit is behind it. And there is, uh, before I talk about peddling, and what it means, listen, some need to be delivered from being connected to religious mind science. This is the stuff that many preachers have learned from Napoleon Hill in 1883 to 1970. Napoleon Hill has the rich and power of positive thinking. And if you can see it, you need no faith. He, he, he teaches that if you can see and visualize something, you can have it. Bingo. Presto. Listen, you might as well go to a fortune teller, a necromancer, or a crystal romancer, or somebody, but that's what Napoleon Hill is teaching. Some ministries, are y'all telling me, some leaders and false teachers and prophets are teaching this mess. It's religious mind science, which means it, it, it's a success formula by Napoleon Hill, which says that you, if you can put your mind to it and see it, that you can have it. Amen. And that name it and claim it stuff is connected to it. All right. And then they tell you to get your books and credit cards out. These humanistic philosophies. Amen. Paul said that in Galatians 1, 8 and 9. Amen. That if we preach another gospel, that we are cursed other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are cursed. Some are sit under a curse of this gospel. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, daily. We sit under a curse where they're preaching another gospel. It's false. I'm telling you, it's false. So peddling means, listen to me closely, peddling means to market, to merchandise the gospel. It's to market it, merchandise it. Give a seed, God's going to do this. It's to also market it for exchange of something of value or currency. I challenge you today, get free. Some of you got seeds out there that you have sown and there's been no breakthrough until these places into TV. Some are not going to church because of it because they said I have a church. Let me tell you this. The tithe and offering belongs to the church. All right. The tithes do. They support the work of God. The offering you can give to any ministry of your choice. Amen. And I'm not going to even go in there to talking about giving. But some of us have sold seed in the enemy has snatched them because of the ground. Some of saying, God, how much longer do I be in this mess? First, you need to break out of the witchcraft. Let me pray. I'm not going to keep you much longer. But first, you need to break free from the witchcraft and the false teachers. Amen. Amen. Some are sowing into these places, but no change. And many a times, if you do, then you might need some curses broken or might need deliverance. But if you know that they are teaching false doctrine, why do you continue to sow? Some of you are in places you're afraid to come out of because you know they'll curse you when you leave. I know. Let me pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for these your people who have heard this teaching, stirring their hearts to rise and rebuke the false doctrines and false teachings that are out here that are destroying the body of Christ in Jesus' name. I cancel every diabolical plan and assignment and attack that is set against the lights if they have received this teaching in Jesus' name. I decree this teaching was stirring them a holy boldness, a holy indignance in Jesus' name against these false teachers, false prophets, false message, false gospel. I ask you to break it off of their lives and unwind them for the charismatic and American materialism and humanism that has been released by some that are called themselves prophets and even teachers. I ask you to unwind their minds and deliver them from this witchcraft. I command it in Jesus' name to come out of them now. In Jesus' name, loose them and let them go. And even spirits of greed and poverty in Jesus' name, I command it to go. In Jesus' name, I ask you to break it off of them, and I ask you to release the fire of God in Jesus' name. Release the fire of God unto them. Fire of God in Jesus' name. Break them free from poverty in Jesus' name and doctrines of devils. I command them in Jesus' name to come out of them in Jesus' name, out of their mind, out of their hearts out of their spirits in Jesus name break them free from this demonic foundation and every seed that is so lord because they obeyed your principles lord bring a harvest to it in Jesus name and father we thank you we bless you we love you and praise you for it in Jesus name Amen and amen. If this teaching has blessed you today, I ask you, uh, just out of generosity, uh, to go to our site, touch of the master, HMI.org, uh, PayPal us. Uh, there's also an online store where you can purchase teachings and various things from our ministry. Also read up about our ministry and what we do internationally and all over the world. Uh, praise God for all of you. Thank you for joining in. But if you feel that this has blessed you, Please go to our site, touchofthemasterhmi.org, and sow a seed. God will certainly bless you. And I'm not saying that you have to. I'm not going to say that God's going to do nothing. When you follow his principle, he'll bless you. Amen. So remember, amen, if, as I have sold truth into you, and as I have sold the gospel into you, when we sow the gospel, God says that you should release carnal things or when you are taught the word. Amen. So God bless all of you. Amen. Thank you for joining in. God bless you. Have an awesome day.